more significant truth is the amazing lack of success that communism has met in attracting the Negro, who might easily be tempted to turn to some other discipline to gain respite from his desperate plight. We will continue to be vigilant against uh, communist infiltration, but we also serve notice that we will continue to resolutely wage the struggle for the full emancipation of the Negro. We will not allow ourselves to be diverted. We will not allow Eastland Bonnet or the George Wallaces to use the red issue to block our efforts, to split our ranks, or confuse our supporters. Political language, we've broken loose from the Egypt of slavery. And we have moved through the wilderness of legal segregation. And now we stand on the border of the promised land of integration. The old order is passing away. And I'm convinced as I stand before you tonight that the system of segregation is on its deathbed. And the only thing uncertain about it is how costly the segregationists will make the funeral. The old order is passing away. The moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. But in the state of California, that I'm seeing this afternoon, sorry that I'm here on a kind of uh, dash in, dash out basis and schedule. But I want to talk about it is just as necessary for the concerned person and the person of goodwill to condemn the intolerable conditions which continue to exist in our society, which cause individuals to feel that they have no, no other alternative but to engage in violence in order to call attention to their problem. But after all, a riot is the language of the unheard. And what is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the last few years. It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and democracy have not been met. And it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about justice, humanity, and equality. The main thing to remember is that we're here because we're facing today the whole issue of the Civil Rights Movement. And even bigger than that, I think quite seriously we're facing today the issue of violence and nonviolence. And this is something that we've got to face squarely. It's a very difficult question. We're going to have a war, a revolution, or not? And so I called him Moses. Not so much because I would defame him or make light of him, but because of the kind of person he was who somehow had brought his God down to a meaningful confrontation with the problems that beset each of us in our day-by-day -day living. And like a Moses of old, he had chosen to suffer affliction with the people of God rather to enjoy those things that might be his because of his own academic prowess, his own ability as a preacher, his own gifts, The whites are the ones who, by our vicious racism, have brought to death this sainted follower of the Prince of Peace. My wife and I have an adopted Negro son, now serving in the Peace Corps in Africa. He is bone of our bone, and he is flesh of our flesh. All of California mourns the death of Dr. Martin Luther King, but perhaps nowhere is this more evident than at Sacramento State College, 
where thousands of persons of all races and creeds have gathered to honor Dr. King. However, the attitude of the speakers ranges from those urging peace and nonviolence to those warning of militancy if a lesson has not been learned. No, 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 no. We have to say no, hell no, no more. And it's going to have to be up to white America in particular. White America is going to have to understand this. Because black America knows we can no longer tolerate this. James Foreman told you. Give it to her, brother. If one of us go down, we got to take 10 honkies. But we are not here today for that. Some 60 minutes ahead of the students from Sac State and those from Grant High. In all communities, be they black or white, in any movement, be it right or left, it is always a small group of people that are doing the moving. However, we are a very large nation. We are a very prosperous nation. And I ask you, where are the people? Where are the people here today? <laughs> I'm Vern Hawkins in San Francisco, where thousands are gathered here for a noon rally at Civic Center. Mayor Joseph Alioto has ordered all flags to be flown at half-mast. With many offices and schools closed, the turnout here is huge. Do you think that the mood of the civil rights movement might change now, Mr. Francois? Well, I would hope not. Uh, I suppose it depends on the extent to which uh, we're able to offer alternatives, and, and that depends upon our whole society. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King believed that justice and freedom and equality could be achieved by nonviolence. He died in that belief. He was in Memphis to demonstrate that this could occur. Uh, there is this uh, great debate in the black community as to whether men like Dr. Martin Luther King were correct or whether there's a, another way. There are many of us who followed him, who continue to follow his his uh, principles and his policies. Uh, I hope that we can carry on and prove uh, what he believed to be the case, uh, that this country can solve its problems by nonviolence. Dr. King's death had a profound effect on the Negro community, both in Sacramento and across the nation. Here in Del Paso Heights, a predominantly Negro community in Sacramento, people were upset and they were thoughtful. I thought it was a damn dirty shame. Members of the Sacramento Area Council of Churches met last night and then again today to discuss plans for a march in Sacramento on Sunday. Well, I was completely stunned and numbed. Even now, I feel that way. What is your purpose in meeting with the other ministers today? What are you trying to achieve? Well, we're trying to uh, demonstrate to the community, at, or at least try to get the community to feel that uh, here is an opportunity not to retaliate, but to uh, take up where Dr. Martin Luther King left off. Lord, for being selfish and indifferent towards the crying needs of our fellow men.
I don't think any of us would deny that Dr. King was a great man. The chancellor on the Davis campus of the University of California officially canceled all noontime classes. Many others did not meet for the remainder of the day. The rally was sponsored by the Black Student Union. Some called for militant action, others continued nonviolence. I had never seen such unity that is shown by this group, and I think that this will be a united campus for whatever happens. He symbolized the philosophy of kindness, of love, of nonviolence, and all the rest. White America should search its conscience. I think it should look and see what has happened and try to eradicate what has happened. I think they should move right now in trying to change things because the black people aren't going to see the black leaders be killed down anymore. I, I really hope that uh, people will be sober in the months to come because uh, Martin Luther King has uh, has left a tremendous image and uh, quite an impact on not only black people but white people and uh, I just hope people are sober enough to uh, not to really get carried away. The general tone on the Davis campus is one of concern. Many persons wearing black armbands and realizing that although they may have taken no stand in the past from this point on, they have no choice but to make a decision. This is Dick Doty, KCRA News, reporting from the Davis campus. Hundreds of college students and faculty members, both black and white, marched down Pacific Avenue from the University of the Pacific and San Joaquin Delta College to join with others at Hunter Square, Stockton's downtown plaza. The noon rally was held to eulogize the man who had done the most to advance the cause of civil rights along the paths of nonviolence. The brief meeting was ended on a note of prayer led by Father Barnabas Hughes of St. Mary's High School. You have led us to admire him. You have inspired within us the wish to emulate him. Let this same desire remain now so that even as he imitated our Lord who told the apostles to put the sword back so may we too, in the spirit of nonviolence, carry on that this world may be one, for we are brothers, your sons, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Stockton's mayor, Joe Dahl, has ordered all municipal flags flown at half-mast until after Dr. King's funeral. He's also proclaimed Sunday a day of mourning when a special memorial service will be held at the Civic Auditorium. This is Kent Pierce, KCRA News in Stockton. Murder is not the action of a responsible citizen of this country. But each of us shares responsibility for the situation which produces such irrational and unwarranted violence. As concerned people, we are to renew and redouble our efforts to establish dialogue between minority groups and majority leaders so that the economic, social, and physical ghettos may be eliminated from our society. Dr. King's tragic death 
puts additional urgency upon us to resolve the injustices and discrimination which exist in our common life. Governor Ronald Reagan today joined with a group of about 200 Del Paso Heights residents in dedicating a new recreation center to be built at the corner of Grand Avenue and Dry Creek Road here in Del Paso Heights. The plan is to put up the 20 by 100 foot square building by the 1st of June and have it ready for occupancy and use this summer in Sacramento and in Del Paso Heights. One of those, of course, who is instrumental in this is uh, Reverend York of Del Paso Heights. We would like to try to build our, pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. We, I don't think, we don't think that handouts is the way. We want to do these things for ourselves. Do something constructive for ourselves to prove to the world that we can work together and we can live together and we can build together. And this is what we're trying to do. I think this is wonderful. I learned about this the first time uh, last week uh, when we had a meeting of the community leaders here from this neighborhood in the, uh, down at my office and I found out this was going on and at that time uh, I, uh, I couldn't accept the invitation because I was slated for uh, these Governor Cup ceremonies and appearance up uh, at Tahoe in the, in the ski races but in view of what happened I of course canceled that and having canceled it I thought this was about as good a way as anyone could observe this National Day of Mourning. What do you think of having a recreation center here? I think it'll be all right you know, you know, uh, just like the Christian, Christian Center, playing pool and going places, going in the snow and places. I think it'll be a lot of fun. You think it's something that's needed? Yes, I think it'll help out. I think it'll help help us out very much. Would you use it? Yeah, I think we would, because some people at the nighttime don't have things to do. Instead of just going around starting fights, there ain't no need of doing all that, making trouble and all that. What do you think about it? I think it's a good idea to keep people out the streets and keep them busy. You think they'll use it? They should. Sacramento has experienced very little racial violence, none this year. Driving through town on this spring day, nothing seemed further away than the violence and the strife in Memphis, in Washington, Chicago, Pittsburgh, and Detroit. But a simple march and a memorial service brought the strife in those cities and the racial trouble very close to home, and it was obvious that many people feel involved. Spencer Michaels, KCRA News, reporting.